Hello friends, welcome to a basic demonstration on the Canovia software. In this demonstration, we will be choosing a sports video and try to analyze it using the Canovia software. Once the software opens, to the left you will find the Explorer panel. Navigate and select your folder which contains your sports video. You may either drag a file to your main area or you can find a tile of the video here. You can double click on it to open the video. Once the video is open, to the left bottom you can find certain buttons to play to pause to move to the next frame to move to the previous frame to move to the beginning of the video and to move to the end of the video there is another button which says change repeat mode so now it is in the loop mode so the video is playing again and again you can untoggle it if you want the video to be played only once most of the time we will not be working with the entire footage of our sports video so we may have to select a small portion of the sports video which here we are going to call it as the working zone so to select the start and end of the working zone you have to use these frame navigation buttons so I am moving to the right side and selecting the starting frame so let me choose this as my starting frame adjacent to your video progress bar you can see a opening parenthesis button click on it now you can see your start of the video has been shifted from this place to this place now go to the end of the video and navigate backwards for choosing your last frame now click on the closing parenthesis now you can see the end of the video has shifted from here to here. This is how you select your working zone. Now you may play and check if you have captured the right sequence from your overall footage. As you can see this sequence is performed by one of our student who is performing a bowling move in a cricket game. So let us try to analyze this particular motion. Just below the video you can find the toolbar. Now first let me select the tool pencil. So using this pencil I can draw anywhere in the video. The next tool is the line tool. So click on it and you can find that I can draw a line. So click the start point and leave the left mouse button to complete the line. So you can right click on the line and change the color and size of the line. So here you can see I have changed the color and the thickness of the line. So let me move to the first frame. So let me draw a line here for the length of the arm. You can see that the line doesn't move with the object. But you can move to another frame and you can try to draw the line once again for the same length of the arm. These lines drawn at different frames of the video can help us in understanding how a particular link of our body is transforming during the motion. Next, let us draw a circle. So go to the circle button, click on it. So select on any point so right click you can change the color and the size of the circle apply so you will find that once the frames progress these are getting uh, faded away so these lines and circles can be used as static markers which can be used by us for learning for example, I can try to draw an another line, so connecting this to this. Then I can right click on this particular line 
and click this as display measure. So here you can see the length of this line is 473 pixels. Now since I have not calibrated any distance here, it is mentioning in terms of pixels. So these many pixels, this is the distance that has been transversed by this point of the arm. Now in order to calibrate, I can try to draw a line on a known dimension. Let me see that this would be your calibrating measure. So I know that the length of this particular tile is uh, let's say half a meter, so which is 50 centimeters. So you can see that all the other lengths are measured in terms of this particular length in the video. Now let me delete these lines. So just right click on them and click delete. Now let us learn how to use the cross markers. So click on the button which says cross marker. So it is a blue color plus sign. You can right click at any place and to change the color. So I am choosing red color. Now I am positioning my marker in the approximate location of the ball. So now I am going to trace the path taken by this ball during the bowling process. Then uh, press escape, move over the cross marker and right click. You will find that there is an option called as track path. Select track path. Now you can see that there are two rectangles. So the first rectangle indicates the location of my object and the second rectangle indicates the search area for this object. Now this is a semi-automatic process. When I move to the next frame, you can see that the rectangles is also moving. So you can see that this location is being tracked from one frame to the another automatically. You might have noted that we are not using a high definition video. You may use a high speed camera and record a video with more number of frames per second. But since we are not using a high frames per second video, you can see that the clarity of the image is not high. So there is a possibility that this could not track our object. In that case, we can always move this rectangle to the position and continue. Now if you see in the previous frame, you can see that since this portion is very blurred, the marker has moved to the head of the bowler. So I can move this to this location since I know where the ball is. I can move this to this location. Now it is okay. So you need to be moved manually to an approximate location. So you can see that even in a very blurry image, we can try to get a decent uh, study of the distance traveled by the ball and also the speed of the ball, which we'll be seeing shortly. Sometimes there is a possibility that the path gets ended automatically. But in this case I want the path to continue. So I can see that the ball is somewhere here. So what I can do is I can right click at this end point and select restart path division. So let me continue this for the rest of the cycle.
So now we have done the same process till the end of the cycle. That is still the last frame. Now I can move behind. So you can see at the end of the cycle, uh, the ball would have left to the person's hand, but we continue to trace the person's hand. So now we have successfully traced the palm of the bowler. You can see here that at certain locations, the time is recorded automatically. So these are the locations which you can find here. So these are the keyframes that have been added automatically. If you are in need of the time for a particular moment, for example, so I would like to know the time in this particular location. So you can see that there is no time here. So all I have to do is insert a keyframe and the particular time is automatically inserted here. Right click on the path which we just traced and select the option configuration. Here you can see there are certain other options which you can explore. But for now we are interested in an option called as measurement. So select on the distance and click apply. Now we can see the distance that is traveled by the palm of the bowler in these various key images. So once again if I would like to know the distance at a particular point move to the corresponding frame you can see that it is visible already or you can just add a key image to make it visible all the time. Once again click on this marker and select configuration. Now let us change the option for measurement from distance to speed. Now you can see the speed is mentioned here. So at this point the speed of the ball or the palm of the bowler is 22.24 meter per second. So using this you can know what is the tangential velocity of the ball when it is leaving the person's hand. Now let us select the next option. So go to the toolbar, select the button which says angle. So click on it. So I am going to measure the angle at the knee. So just click and drag. You will find three dots. So move those three dots around to get the angle. So if you want to measure the inner angle, just right click and select invert angle. So this is the angle at this particular position, 67 degrees. And if you want to measure an angle at another location, you can repeat the same process and compare the two angles. So from what we have done so far, we can get the details like the time taken at any point, the distance traveled by any particular point in the athlete's body or the position of the ball etc and also the speed. So these information can be utilized to learn about the work done by the bowler. Now let us go back to the toolbar, select the stopwatch button. You can place the stopwatch anywhere in the video. So right click on it and select start stopwatch. So when the video plays, the stopwatch automatically starts running. So you can pause it at any time. So at 0.63 seconds, the ball is moving at a speed of 6.73 meter per second. And of course, if you want to know the distance, you can go here and change the distance and click apply. So for the same time of 0.63 seconds, the palm of the bowler has moved for a distance of 384.83 centimeters. So these information are very much useful for understanding the motion of the sportsman. So these data can be compared with the data from another sportsman whose video can be analyzed in a similar manner. So comparison between two separate sportsmen and hence the comparison between their performance and their efficiencies can be done using this kind of software. Of course, analyzing the sports behavior of the sportsman is only one of the applications of the Kinovia software. 
This can also be used by the doctors to analyze the bodily movements of their patients. These data will also help us to create realistic animations using softwares like Unity. Now we hope you had fun watching this small introduction of using Canovia to analyze a sports video. We will return back with more such interesting videos using Canovia in the coming days. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.